we did effort and we did find one Grant Cohn of uh, rights for 49 about the 49ers on Sports Illustrated. Grant, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on. I understand that uh, Nate kind of ran into you at a, at a training camp and uh, and, you know, we kind of got all this got all this situation. So thank you so much for uh, for hopping on with us. Thank you very much for having me. It's an honor to be on the show. Awesome. Thank you, Grant. Uh, real quick, first off, I, I, we were, me and Alan were just talking about this. The Niners have invested a ton in the past couple of years into that backup tight end spot. Obviously, Cameron Latu last year as well. Uh, they're only carrying two on the official 53-man roster. What, what exactly does that say to you? Well, they're bringing back Eric Silbert. They, they signed him in the offseason. He was their number two in the preseason. And they released him yesterday so they could get a couple of injured guys on the 53 who they're going to put on IR. That I think they've already re-signed Eric Sobert. So there was just sort of like bookkeeping, but they're going to go with three. And it, it, it is kind of embarrassing that they had to cut both of their tight ends that they drafted last year, but frankly, neither of them earned it. I mean, you saw Braden Willis try to block. That didn't go so well, and Cam Latu can't catch. So they made the right call, but it's going to hurt them eventually that they don't have much to show for the last couple of drafts. This draft looks pretty good, though. Grant, just as far as the the Brock Purdy situation, right? A couple at ESPN articles have come out, and now he's moving into the conversation of overrated. I watch a lot of your stuff on Twitter, and I know that you want to see him play well when he is with some of the second and third stringers. What do you make of the everybody is assuming that Brock is going to get probably 60 mil at the end of this? Is there anything Brock has left to prove this season? I would say so. I mean, as good as he's been, and he's been kind of flawless early in his career, he still has only started 21 regular season games. It's a very thin resume, and whatever happens this year is going to be like 40% of it. So if he goes out and let's say he's listening to all the criticism, and people say he's a dink and dunk quarterback, and he wants to prove that he's more than that, he starts not taking the check down to Christian McCaffrey so he can force it downfield, and he starts throwing interceptions, which is what he did in camp in preseason. If he keeps doing that, then that'll change the perception around him and, and his value. But right now, if he just like stays doing what he's been doing, he has the argument that he's worth, that he should be the highest paid player in the league next year. Um, not because he's the best player in the league, but because that's how it works in the quarterback market. Whoever's up next gets that contract. And if Tua Tagovailoa and Jordan Love is worth it, then Brock Purdy has a very good argument. Grant, the uh, the Niners, I think, cut six players uh, from their last two drafts, if I if I counted correctly. Does that tell you that the Niners are more in a win-now mode, or does, is that more to you speaking of the quality of those drafts? Yeah, it's both. Yeah. It's like, yeah, give them credit for not playing roster politics and keeping the vets or the best players um, because you're not really worried about developing for the future. You have to win now. But at the same time, it just shows that the, those last couple of drafts were – not so good. I mean, Danny Gray, Ty Davis Price, Cam Latu, a lot of like wasted early picks. Drake Jackson, Jake Moody's like the best one, and he's not particularly great. So um, at least they did good this year. It's interesting. They lost Adam Peters, who was very important in their front office. He went to Washington, and right. randomly they had a great draft without him this year. Maybe he was the problem. <laughs> Grant, we all know the Brandon Ayuk thing was was – on the horizon and you know a lot of people and we'll get into how the Niners are covered as well before we get you out of here but when it comes to Trent Williams just frankly speaking did Trent Williams break the Niners plan everybody knew Brandon Ayuk was going to be a situation but did this Trent Williams thing just come out of nowhere and and the Niners didn't expect to have to deal with this as well they're very planned out but it seems like they didn't see this one coming yeah, which is interesting. It's like, how well do you really know Trent Williams? Uh, yeah. Seems like they made some assumptions. Like, mm -hmm. oh, he's a team player. He wants to be here. He wants to win a Super Bowl. Like, yes and no. He has his own motivations, his own uh, desires. And it seems like he wants to be the highest paid left tackle in football, um, first and foremost. He needs that recognition. And if he doesn't have it, he's not so interested in playing. I, I don't know. I, I think that they could anticipate the Brandon Ayuk one because – every fourth year receiver who's a first round pick is going to want an extension. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's just part of the business, but a 36 year old left tackle who just got extended wakes up one morning and decides, you know what? I want more money. Like that's not something you can necessarily plan for unless you know him very well. So he has him over a barrel. Let's see what they, let's see what they do. Grant. I mean, just straight up. Do you think the Niners are a better team this season than they were last season? 
absolutely not. And it's not just on paper, but it just felt like last season there was a whole culture on the team. Like, let's not complain about our contracts. Let's all sacrifice one more year so we can win the Super Bowl. Because last year, Trent Williams didn't have any guaranteed money left in his contract. But now it's an issue. And it's an issue for Christian McCaffrey and Brandon Ayuk and a lot of players. It feels like the attitude this year is ask not what I can do for the team, but what the team can do for me, which is not necessarily how you start a Super Bowl campaign. Grant, I just had to ask, I watched your, I think it was on YouTube with Ethan Strauss. This was a couple months ago. And we see all the back and forth. Chris and I were on social media. We see all of it. What, what do you have to say to people that think that your style of journalism is too negative? I think it's interesting. I feel like that's a California thing because mm-hmm. most of the coverage in California locally is, gosh, this team's the greatest, and aren't they just fantastic? And it's like, it's like the, the, the line between journalists and fan is very blurred out here, but on the East Coast, it's not. I mean, in New York, they're crazy. Like, I would seem tame in New York. I was talking to Robert Sala about this at the owners' meetings. Like, he, he was like, man, Kyle Shanahan needs to back off with you, man. Because he's like, you're the only guy who asks some tough questions. In, in New York, I got 20 guys every day, and they're nuts. They tried, to, they tried to get me run out of town after two years. So I think it's just a, a comparison thing. Like, there's so many guys putting the Niners in the Hall of Fame right now that if you bring up real issues, people are like, why are you being negative? Like, well, they haven't won a Super Bowl yet. Mm-hmm. There's probably a reason. Let's talk about some real stuff. Um, that's kind of how I approach it. But I like to think I'm fair and back. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you find a, a good way of uh, bringing entertainment and, and making it fun. I mean, it still is talking about sports, and it, it feels like you, you definitely have a great way of uh, keeping it real. And I, I think that that's very refreshing, especially like you're saying. I mean, sometimes there can be some some reporters out there that you're not entirely sure what their what their motivations are, because it feels like sometimes the, the not just the Niners, but the Warriors. I mean, we have it here in Sacramento, the Kings, they can do no wrong. And I do think it is very necessary to kind of have the the counter. I would call you a realist. I don't think I would call you uh, somebody who's who's critical. I just think that sometimes uh, you're you're not very quick to just all automatically assume that things are right. Grant, before we get you out of here, first and foremost, I mean, Trent Williams or, or Brandon Ayuk, which one do you think gets resolved first? Well, it's going to be interesting. They have practice today, and there's a report that Ayuk might might actually practice. It seems like they may be threatening to start finding him. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, you're not hurt. You got to be out there, and it seems pretty clear he doesn't want to get fined. So if he's out on the field, is he in a good mood, or is he going to find another way to make the Niners' lives comfortable? I think this whole IU thing is—I don't think we're in the last chapter yet. I think it's going to get even more weird. It could drag into the season, and um, I don't see how they win. I don't see how they play a game without Trent Williams. If Brock Purdy gets hurt and Trent Williams isn't out there, that's organizational malpractice. They can't blame Brock. That's on them. They got to get Trent in the building for Week One somehow, some way. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Grant. We really, really appreciate it. Grant Cohn writes for the, about the 49ers on Sports Illustrated. You can also go subscribe to his YouTube channel uh, at Grant Cohn. He's got daily Niners content. And uh, yes, you will you will find some some very real content there. And uh, yeah, we definitely appreciate you coming on, Grant. And definitely hope to talk to you throughout the season, man. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Talk soon. Absolutely. That is Grant Cohn, again, writer for the Sports Illustrated. And uh, you can definitely go check out that YouTube channel, Grant Cohn. Coming up next, we do get into those six burning questions about the NFL quarterbacks 